Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we've got some we've got some really great stuff going on here. So we're going to skip over the second reading for now. We'll come to that at the next video. We're going to jump jump into the gospel passage for the second Sunday of Lent in year A, which every year the second Sunday of Lent A, B, and C, the gospel passage is whichever gospel uh, or whichever um, reference to the particular gospel the Transfiguration is in. So in Matthew it's in chapter 17, and then Mark. It's in a different chapter and verse, and in Luke, it's a different chapter and verse. But it's always the transfiguration. And there's there's some really great things. I'm, I'm excited about this. Woo! All right, we got to pray. So, sorry, Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Let's pray, and then we will jump in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we praise you for your goodness, for revealing yourself to us showing us your glory, the light that, that flows from your face. We ask you to continue revealing yourself to us in a deep way, especially in the Mass, in the Word that is proclaimed to us, and in the sacrament that is broken for us and given to us and offered for us to the Father. We ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Check this out. Here we go. So it's a little tricky. The official passage that we're going to read on Sunday does not start the same way that verse 1 starts in the Bible. So I'm going to read what the Bible says because it actually, I think, makes a really good point because it shows us a little bit of a connection of what we're looking at in our passage. So anyway, you won't hear these first three words. Yeah. After six days, <clears throat> Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Excellent. Okay, this there's just even a little insight in there uh, while I was reading. So so many good things. Okay, what's what's going on here, and why do we do this during Lent? I I don't have all the answers, but I think there are some answers that I I, I find to be very energizing, exciting. As you can tell, I'm excited. Okay, so what's the deal? So after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured. His face shone like. So what's what's going on here? So, um. Matthew is writing his gospel for a primarily Jewish audience, people who are of the Israelite um, religion, right? The Jewish religion that God gave in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, which they wouldn't necessarily call the Old Testament like we call it that because that's, that's, they didn't have the New Testament yet as he was, I mean, he was, he was writing the New Testament, right? So he's, he's, Anyway, so, so he's writing for them. So, so these people that are reading this are going to be very familiar with things that took place in the Old Testament. Very familiar, like super, super familiar because it, this was their religion, this, their, their scriptures. So when Matthew is writing, a lot of times he writes and he'll refer to uh, prophecies, especially the prophet Isaiah, but he'll, re he'll refer to prophecies that are given in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. And people, like he's, he writes with an expectation that they're going to understand this is what he's referring to and how Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of that, of, of the old covenant, because he is bringing the new covenant and he is, he is the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for throughout, right? So he's, so if you remember the first, the first reading in, in Genesis chapter 12, right? How Abraham was promised land descendants and worldwide blessing. Jesus fulfills all of that. I mean, there, there are fulfillments of that in the Old Testament in the Old Old Covenant scriptures, but but not ultimate fulfillments, right? It's it, the whole world doesn't know 
the blessings that come from Abraham until Jesus comes and fulfills all of it. Um, the whole world doesn't, doesn't become descendants of Abraham until Jesus comes and invites us all into the family of God. Right? So, so all of this doesn't take place until Jesus ultimately fulfills it all. Okay, so, so anyway, with that in mind, as we're reading the account of the transfiguration in the Gospel of Matthew, it's helpful for us to consider if we can think of any places in the Old Testament where somebody goes up a mountain and brings people with him and encounters God. That, that's a helpful thing to consider. And it just so happens to be the case that there are two people in the Old Testament who go up the mountain, and when they go up the mountain, they encounter God. And one of those people brings three others with him, right? So like, we're, there, there just happens to be a connection from, with this gospel passage to the Old Testament. Any idea who, the, who those two people might be? If you guessed Moses and Elijah, the very people that appear with Jesus on this mountain, you guessed exactly right. This is incredible. So, so Moses, we, we know this, that, that Moses, that, right, he, 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 in Egypt, he brings the people with the 10 plagues. He brings them out of, out of Egypt, crosses the Red Sea, and then they're in the desert. And Moses is the very clear leader of God's people while they're in the desert, just kind of wandering around because, because they're so stubborn and they refuse to trust God. And so he, he doesn't let them enter the promised land. They're just waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. And, um, and this, this actually, and to, and to be honest, at the point when Moses goes up the mountain, this is all before they are kind of lingering in the desert. So this is as they're kind of making their way. Moses goes up the mountain, Mount Sinai, and he brings with him three people, Aaron, and then Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. Aaron is the high priest, and Nadab and Abihu are brothers. So think about this. Jesus now goes up the mountain, and he brings with him three people. Peter, who... We can debate, if we want, um, with, with other Christians about whether Peter is, is the first pope and whether the Catholic Church is the church that Jesus established. We can, we can debate all that, but it's really clear in the scriptures that Peter is the first apostle. He's like the chief apostle. So just like Aaron was the high priest, Peter is the chief apostle, the, the, the clear leader among the apostles. And then what? Uh, Aaron's two sons, Nadab and Abihu, are brother, who are brothers. Who else goes with Peter, James, and John, who are brothers, right? It's, it's like a really cool connection that, that Jesus, who is, of course, the new leader of the people, right? He's, and, and what's more, we find out that he's more than just the new leader, but, but nonetheless, he's the leader. And he, he goes up the mountain to, well, to encounter God. But, but there's, a, there's a twist of events here that, that Jesus, right, he's fulfilling what Moses did. And so it's not just that he, he goes up to encounter God. It's, it's he goes up the mountain to reveal that he's God, right? So like there's, there's something better happening here in Jesus. But, but to show that Jesus is mimicking the pattern of the Old Testament and, and the leadership of the Old Testament. It's, it's incredible, an incredible thing that's taking place. So Moses goes up, the, he does this in Exodus chapter 24 and Exodus, Exodus chapter 34. Do you know when he does it? Well, it says actually in those, it's, he goes up on the seventh day, which is why chapter 17 begins, Matthew begins by saying after six days, right? So after the six days are over, Jesus goes up. So what day is he going up? The seventh day, right? So it's all in imitation of what's going on in Moses. It, this this incredible thing that, that Jesus is, is showing what? He's showing that that he's greater than Moses, but he, he's like a new Moses, right? And we talked last week about how Jesus is a new Adam, right? Well, so this, this is just really cool. Jesus is a new Adam. And now this week we're seeing that he's a new Moses. And, and ultimately that, that what? He's, he's greater than Moses. And he's going up this mountain, which it doesn't give the name of the mountain, but it's like, this is a new Mount Sinai the place where we can go to encounter God. And this is exactly what happens with Peter, James, and John, is that they encounter Jesus in a new way, maybe a, a way that it's, it's not exactly clear, but it sure seems like it's, it's, it's clear that they're encountering him in a way that they hadn't encountered him prior, right? They hadn't yet seen his, his face shine. They hadn't yet seen everything about him change. And, and the word is, is a metamorpho, oh, metamorpho or something, something, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's, that's the word, which, which, what does that sound like? Metamorphosis, right? So we're not talking about like how Jesus, like they got up the mountain and he just kind of had this sort of wild look in his eyes. No, no, he went up the mountain and he like, he had a radical change in his appearance to, to the point that, that 
that Peter's just like, he's like, oh my gosh, this, it's so good that we're here, right? It's so good. Like, let's, let's stay here. I'm going to build three tents, three booths so that y'all, you, you, Moses and Elijah can just like hang out and, and we'll just be here and it's going to be incredible, right? Like that's, that's what I would want to do also as, as well as maybe being a little bit afraid, right? Which, which is cool. Okay. So, so we got, we got to keep going. Okay. So Peter's like, okay, let's, this is good. Let's build the tents. And then it says, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So you got, you got, you got to imagine, you got to imagine being on this mountain seeing all this take place like the guy that you are convinced you you know he's the savior but you maybe don't fully know you don't you don't fully know who exactly he is and now here he is like everything about him changes and then what's more as you're speaking to him as he's talking to Moses and Elijah and like by the way how did they know you know like were they wearing name tags like was it what like they were they went up the mountain on name tag sunday or something i i don't know but but whatever like they somehow knew that they were, it was Moses and Elijah and they're, they're talking, like they're all talking and Peter's like, Hey, let me, let me just suggest an idea here. Right. And then while he's doing that, this cloud comes down and then this voice comes from the cloud, right? So the cloud is going to make the Jewish people who are reading this, think of the cloud from the old Testament. If you remember this, as they were going through the desert, as they were going through the Red Sea out of Egypt, they were led by this cloud that, that showed God's glory. It's called the glory cloud. Uh, what, what you might sometimes hear people refer to it as the Shekinah, the glory cloud that reveals God's presence. So this glory cloud, right? So when the, when the Jewish people are reading this, they're like, oh my gosh, it's the glory cloud, which the last time they would have seen the glory cloud would have been when the, the Lord's presence left the temple when it was being destroyed at the Babylonian exile. So now it's like the glory cloud returns to the mountain where the Lord is found. It's th this incredible, like, what is going on here? This is amazing. And so, of course, it makes sense. When the disciples heard the voice, they saw the cloud, they fell prostrate. They, they dropped their, their faces, right? Because it's like, who are we? How, how are we seeing this incredible moment, right? And they were very much afraid. Now, this was, this was the, the insight that I, I had here while we were reading it. So the voice comes from the Father. Uh, it says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. It says, listen to him listen to him. Then they fall down. They're afraid. And the very first thing that Jesus says is what? Jesus came and touched him. He said, rise and do not be afraid, right? Listen to him, be obedient to him because this is my son, the son of the father, whose voice it is that is speaking to you. Listen to him. And the first thing that Jesus says, rise, be not afraid. That's for them. And it's for us, for you and for me, be not afraid. We have no reason to be afraid because because we're with the Lord Jesus, who is revealed here as the eternal Son of God. This this is an incredible thing. This um, this and okay, we'll we'll finish this and then we'll we'll talk more about how Jesus is the eternal Son of God. But but okay, so as they're coming down the mountain, Jesus charged them, "Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead." Right. So something mysterious is going on here, and Jesus does this from time to time. Like he's like, "No, don't, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone." Here he's charging them, like, "Don't say anything until you see the Son of Man rising from the dead," which is fascinating in itself because. It seems like the apostles forget that Jesus tells them that he's going to rise from the dead because then when he dies, you know, like they seem like they go into this sort of despair and, and then when he rises, they're like super surprised, even though he's told them that he's going to rise from the dead. I don't, I don't fully understand that mystery, but nonetheless, Jesus is telling them. And it, what's he doing? He's, he's ultimately saying like, look, we're coming down this mountain. I actually have another mountain to go up later on. And that mountain is Calvary. So this isn't the only mountain that I'm going to go up. It just happens to be that this is the only mountain where you're going to see my glory as revealed in this way. Later on, his glory is revealed when he rises from the dead, where he dies on that other mountain. But, but here, his glory is revealed in a particular way. This is called a, a theophany, which is a, an appearance of God. God. God makes himself known. And it's not just that Jesus is revealing himself to be God here, or is revealed to be God, but that the catechism of the Catholic Church, okay, so we've got this book, um, that, that it's called the chasm. It's, it's got a whole bunch of stuff, the doctrines and the articles of our faith that we believe in and as such. So in this, in this book, in paragraph 555, it talks about how the entire Trinity is revealed, the Holy, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the entire Trinity is revealed in this passage. When, when Jesus, of course, is, is, he's metamorphosized, whatever, he's, he's changed radically so that he's shining. So he's revealed to be the eternal Son. And then the voice, obviously, right, the voice coming said, this is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. But then the catechism talks about how the cloud reveals the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
that that uh, Jesus, of course, is revealed to be a divine person. But here, the whole, the entire Trinity, the Holy Trinity, is is present among the apostles. Here, there's this one. This one quote from it comes from the Byzantine liturgy. I just wanted to read this. So check this out. It says, You were transfigured on the mountain, and your disciples, as much as they were capable of it, beheld your glory, O Christ our God, so that when they should see you crucified, they would understand that your passion was voluntary and proclaim to the world that you truly are the splendor of the Father. I love this. It's like, okay, so there, it's like Jesus is always preparing them. He's always preparing them, which he does even at the end of the passage where he's like, don't say anything until he's, I've been raised from the dead, but he's preparing them so that when they see the crucifixion, they can be confident that whatever's going on here, Jesus is directly willing it. He's, he's wanting to be there, um, which is a fascinating thing that maybe we can talk about later on. It's also fascinating that it seems like they forget this. As I mentioned, it seems like they, they, they forget a little bit about, or maybe even a lot, about who Jesus is revealing himself to be here in this passage. Nonetheless, there's there's so much goodness here. Uh, the, it seems like the main thing that, that's po- being pointed out is that Jesus is God, that he's a new Moses, and he's going up this mountain, which is like a new Mount Sinai. In other words, he's doing something new, and that something new is a complete fulfillment of what's found in the old uh, to bring about to bring about this beautiful new covenant, pointing people, pointing people to the glory of his face to the glory of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. And the Father reveals that you and I should listen to him, to be obedient to him, and above all, to not be afraid, because we are with the, the Lord himself, the Lord God, who is the Son, and where the Son is, there too is the Father and the Holy Spirit. Incredible. All right, God bless you. We'll see you for the next one.